Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Brad Hamilton and today I'm going to show you how to add an explosion to your live action shot in Blender utilizing the Kios add-on for streamlining our explosion systems. This tutorial will go through the tracking process that I typically follow to add 3D objects or simulations to live action footage all the way to a very simple output of your explosion so that you can import and composite the asset in a visual effects compositor of your choice. There are many ways you can do this, but the way I show in this video will be one of the most simple and straightforward ways to start with live action visual effects. While this specific tutorial will be shown in Blender 2.79, the same concepts can be applied in Blender 2.8 as well, just keep in mind that they're still working on the subframe sampling issue for smoke flows. Anyways guys, let's get started. Alright, so here we are inside of Blender, and the first thing we are going to do here is delete everything on our grid. We want to make sure that we are using the Cycles rendering engine, so we will switch from Blender Render to Cycles at the top here, so we can render smoke and fire properly. Alright, so now let's go ahead and go to the Movie Clip Editor, so that we can import our live action clip and track it into the 3D world using Blender's motion tracking system. So we'll just go to Open here and find our clip, and now we can drag through our timeline and make sure everything was working properly. As you can see here, our clip actually goes beyond our original Blender timeline, so let's go ahead and extend our end frame to 290 so that we can track the entire shot effectively. I recommend increasing the pattern and search size a bit as the tracking process is a bit easier. Also under the marker display tab here, I recommend selecting the search checkbox so that you can see the tracking points better. And now we are going to start adding tracking points in our scene. I'm simply pressing control as I left click on the footage to add these tracking points. Alright, so I'm going to fast forward part of this video where I'm adding tracking points to our shot, but essentially what we are doing is adding tracking points at points of contrast in the scene in both the foreground and the background, and then using the tracking play button here on the left side to track each point. You can track each point individually or you can press shift B and select all the points at the beginning of the shot and do them at once. Again, essentially what we are doing here is finding points of contrast within our scene in both the foreground and the background of our video and telling Blender to find those points throughout the shot. By doing this, Blender can recreate the live action camera movement in the virtual 3D world. Once you've added and tracked a good amount of points in both the foreground and the background of the shot, scroll through your entire timeline and make sure that they aren't slipping off of any of their points. If they are, you can manually move them back or you can find new track points and tweak those. Essentially what you want is a good amount of points across the foreground and the background of your image so that Blender can compute the parallax of the camera across the scene. And before we tell Blender to solve the track, we want to change the camera and lens settings on the right side here. Under the camera tab here, we will choose Canon APS-C because that is the type of camera sensor that we shot on. And then we will change the lens focal length to 18mm because that's the lens we shot on. Now we can go to the solve tab here on the left side and click on solve camera motion. And depending on if you've added enough track points to tell Blender the movement of the camera, you will get a solve error down here below 2, which means you have a fairly decent track. If you have a solve error above 2, I recommend you make sure that none of your tracks are slipping and that you add some more so that Blender has some more information to work with. You can also change the keyframe A and keyframe B settings at the top here to tell the frames in which the camera has the most movement between, but I found that if you don't have enough tracking points in the first place, this won't help as much. Alright, so our solve error is below 2, so let's continue onto our shot in Blender. Under scene setup, we will set this video as our background as well, so we can work with it further, and then we will click on the setup tracking scene button as well. Alright, so now let's go back to our 3D view here, and as you can see, our motion tracked camera as well as a ground plane and cube have been added to our scene. These objects are here because we clicked on the setup tracking scene button, however the real reason we clicked that button is so that Blender could automatically create this node setup here for use in the compositor. This makes it easy to see our explosion once we make it composited over live action footage. Anyway, we will go back to the 3D view here. And now what we want to do is position our 3D camera so that the 3D grid matches the ground plane in our scene here. So let's just rotate it around until we get it really close, like this. And now as you can see, when we scroll through our timeline, the cube looks like it's inside of our scene. Unfortunately for our cube, however, we will not be needing him or the plane below, so we will select and delete them. Instead, we will add some collision cubes as the roof and floor of our cube here to rudimentally recreate our environment in 3D. So let's go to our chaos tab here and near the bottom at extras, let's click on the collision cube. And what this cube is, is simply a cube that has a particle collision and smoke collision attribute. This is so that when we add our explosion system, everything will interact with it like it's actually part of the live action scene. 
we will go ahead and position and scale this object so it is like our floor now and then press shift D and duplicate it and then position the second one as the ceiling to our scene here like this. Now we want our ceiling and floor to be reflecting the light of our environment back onto our simulation so let's go to our materials tab here with it selected and add a new material and then use the eyedropper tool to select the color of the walls in this shot. And now as you can see if we go to render view it looks something like this and then we will go ahead and select the bottom floor object as well and make it the same material. Now what we want to do to the floor plane is make it only render shadows so that we can composite the explosion over the real floor in the shot. So under the objects tab here in the cycle settings we will make it a shadows only object. For the ceiling object we don't want it to render shadows but we do want it to interact with the lights in our scene so under its cycle settings we will deselect the camera visibility. By doing this now we can composite the explosion by itself over our live action shot with its base shadow and rudimentary environmental lighting. Now one more thing we want to do here is recreate the other light sources in our scene. So as you can see in the video here most of our light is coming from the left side of the parking garage so what we want to do is recreate that in Blender. So we will delete this random light here and then press shift A and add a hemi light source. We will position this off to the left of our scene as well and then press shift D and duplicate it along the left side of our parking garage to simulate the lighting in the scene. Finally, for some more ambient light to our world, we will go to the world tab and make the environmental lighting the color of our parking garage as well. Alright guys, so now it's time to add the explosion particles using chaos. So let's go to the frame that we want the explosion to start on say frame 44 and then click our 3d cursor where we want to add the explosion to our scene now we will go over here to the chaos tab and select the dynamic smoke fire checkbox here and we will go to our particle parameters here and change the particle start size to 1 our particle end size to 0.3 our fuel start amount to 2 and our initial starting velocity to 0.3 now we will scroll up to the top here and press the 360 ground burst operator and as you can see, a particle fuel system as well as a custom domain cube have been added to our scene here. Alright, let's go ahead and select our domain and reposition it to match where we want the explosion to be. Under the physics tab of the smoke domain, we will deselect the camera and eyeball tool so that we can tweak the particle system without any of the smoke being simulated. Now let's select our particle system here and move it above our ground plane and position it better in our scene. And as you can see right now, this is what our fuel system is doing, which may work, but let's tweak a few of the particle settings under the particle tab on the right side here. Since this is a very sudden blast, we will decrease the lifetime of the particles to around three or four. And I think for this particular scene, the particles are moving a bit too fast, so we will decrease the normal velocity to around 12. And now we have something like this. We will also change the end emission time to 48 for a more sudden burst of particles. And then for this first fuel system, we will scale it down on the Z axis so that the particles blast out along the floor here. Now we will press Shift D and duplicate this particle emitter. And under the particle tab, we will press the plus button so that this object has a separate particle setting. And we will scale this one up on the Z axis so that it blasts fuel vertically into our scene. And essentially the best way to get a unique looking explosion is by adding a lot of different fuel systems to the blast. But for the sake of this tutorial, we will only use these two. But you can continue this process to create and shape your explosion. Alright, so now let's select our smoke domain and go to the physics tab on the right here. We will change the border collisions to collide all so that the smoke will interact with our domain cube. Deselect our smoke high resolution checkbox for the test simulation and then change divisions to 200 so that we have a slightly larger scale explosion. Finally, for slower burning fuel, we will change the speed of the reaction to 0.05, and for less smoke, we will decrease its value to 3. Now we will save our file so that we can bake our test simulation, then we will reselect the camera and eye boxes under the smoke domain, click on the mix fuel operator for more small details within our simulation, change the end frame of the simulation to 120 for this initial test bake, and then press bake all dynamics and give some time for your computer to simulate. All right, so we are back and this is the result of our first test bake. It's looking pretty cool, but before we bake in higher resolution, let's go ahead and go to render view and see what we are getting so far. It's looking pretty cool here, but we have this weird shadow from our ceiling plane. To fix this, we will select our light sources on the left side of our scene and just bring them down so that there is no shadow created. 
and now we are looking better. Anyway, you can experiment more with the look of your simulation with particles by changing the lifetime and direction, but I'm happy with this for this tutorial. So now let's bake it in higher resolution for more detail. So let's go ahead and select the smoke domain here and go to the physics tab. Now we will go ahead and check the smoke high resolution checkbox and freely bake so that we can re-simulate. The strength of the noise under high resolution we will put at 1.5 and the divisions we will put at 1 for now. For more detail however, you can increase the divisions to 2 or 3. We will change the end frame of our simulation to 200 this time and once again we can press bake all dynamics and give some time for your computer to simulate. Alright so we are back and we have a higher resolution version of our simulation now. And it's looking pretty cool here now, so let's do a little test render to see how our materials are looking within the live action shot. So let's go to the render tab here and change some of these settings first for better results. Under the output option here, we will change the file type to the OpenEXR file format for better range within the image. Make sure that RGBA is selected and that we have an alpha channel as well. Under the sampling tab, we will change the render samples to 5 just for our test, so it's a bit quicker. And then let's just go ahead and click on the seed stopwatch here for noise variation in our render. Under the geometry tab, volume sampling we will change to 0.01 and we will change the max depth to 260. And finally under light paths we will change the volume bounces to 6 so that we have some more light bouncing within our smoke. And this is looking pretty good so let's go ahead and do a test render. So go to render and render image and give some time for your computer. Alright, so this is our result over live action footage right now. The lighting is matching pretty good to our live action shot, but let's tweak a few settings in the materials to make sure that our smoke is dense and that our fire works for the beginning of the shot. Let's go back to 3D view here and select our smoke domain cube, and then we will open up a new window here. On the right window we will open up the node editor, and this is where we can change how our smoke and fire looks based on the simulation results. So let's go on the timeline here to a point in which we have both some smoke and fire in our blast here, and then on the left side we will go to render view, and now as you can see our flames are super bright, so let's adjust a few settings. First let's pull the middle point in our color ramp here to the middle, so that we have a more gradual change in the temperature throughout our flames. Then we will change the color of our right end point here to black so that it's just not as bright. Now let's bring our flame value down to 600 to decrease the brightness a bit and it's already looking a bit better. Now let's change the smoke a bit. So under the multiply node we will change the value to 400 but change the contrast to 1 for a thicker look. And we can also adjust the smoke color a bit to give it a darker more deep look. And this should look pretty good at this point, especially when we add some glow and motion blur and compositing to bring everything together. One thing to note is that it's always good to see how the smoke material looks at different parts of the simulation, and you may want to keyframe the flame and density values at the beginning and near the end of the blast to make sure that you have plenty of details within the flames and they don't get too bright. To keyframe the values at a point on the timeline, simply hold your cursor over the value and press I. For this specific example, near the beginning of our explosion the flames are a bit bright, so we will decrease the brightness of the flames and increase the smoke density near the beginning of the blast with a keyframe, and then set another keyframe with the same material values at the moment where we initially adjusted our smoke material. Alright, so now let's set up our shot for our final render output. I have to reset some of my settings here because my computer crashed, but the main change we need to make is changing the sampling to somewhere between 24 and 40 for less noise in your simulation. Before we press render animation, let's go to our node compositor here, and what we want to do is simply move the composite node so that our explosion is being output into it. Otherwise the live action shot will be output in the background as well, and you won't be able to composite the explosion simulation on top of your live action shot effectively. And now we will go to our output settings under the render tab, create a new folder for the output and name the file. Make sure that your timeline includes the frames you want rendered, and then click on render animation and take a break for your computer to render all of your frames. Anyways guys, that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful. In the next video I will be going over how to composite this explosion in the shot. That tutorial will be for After Effects, as that is where I usually do my compositing, but I may do one for the Blender Compositor as well, if enough people ask for it in the comments. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment below, and I'll see you guys next time.